the arrow here points to the shaft loop, which is the part of the harness which supports the front load from the cart. And that's the part of the harness that I'm making for uh, Clara's harness in this video. This red piece here is the first piece I'm making for Clara's harness. And that piece will be what's called the back saddle and the shaft loops. The back saddle lays over her back and I will make a pad out of lamb's wool to support that against her back. And the shaft loops curl up on her sides. They're loops that lay on her sides that carry the shafts of the cart. And I'll try to get into more detail about that soon. That piece is, uh, I'm not sure how long that piece is. That piece is designed so that from the bottom of one loop to the bottom of the other loop will be 30 inches. And I measured that dimension on Clara's back. I, I know about where on their sides, which is about, you know, low on their barrel, but, but still on the barrel is where the shaft should be carried. You see it in my other photos. And so that's long enough to loop back and make those loops. And then there have to be two smaller straps sewn to it, one on each side, which will make the belly band, which goes under her belly and buckles. That is the back view of one sewn on belly band part, that right there. I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm going to pause this. This strap here that's hanging down, you can see it has the holes that's to accept the buckle. I'm going to pause again. The loop will be this portion. It'll be folded back as it is. You can see that I have cut through the strap here so that I can have this sewn up part inside the loop and the strap emerging to be on the outside. That's because this side will be against the animal's skin or fur, depending on the season. And I don't want this coarse stuff rubbing against her, in this case, this is Clara's or Jenny. And so I bring it up inside the loop to sew so that what lays on the animal's back will, or on the side will be a minimum of roughness. Here we have a strap that I've already sewn a buckle on the end of. And that strap will go on same way. It'll go up through this hole. So in this area and then this will loop back up over and be the other shaft loop. I measured her today. The shaft loops have to be 30 inches apart and from the sew on point here around her belly and to buckle into this needs to be in the neighborhood of 30 inches since that's a variable. I made that one to a length I already knew which is I wanted the buckle to be up on her side where it's easy to reach. I don't want to have to hunker down and get under her to buckle it under her belly because I'm old and stiff. I sewed this buckle on tonight where I can get them. I prefer crossbar buckles so that, come on buckle, focus up. Focus. Okay, well I can't get it in focus very well. There. I, I don't like to have to poke a hole through that strap to put the buckle tongue through. This is a more secure buckle. The strap is not weakened as much by the process. So that's why I choose these. When this goes under her, when it buckles, 
it will be coming up like this so that the tag end of the buckle through strap hangs down free and doesn't loop over. Now, this mechanism here, the back strap and belly band, will have a pad under it made out of lamb's wool so that the weight of the shafts when it's carried on her back will not be concentrated on a small spot but will be spread out and uh, I've used this system for two years now with Abraham and Missy and they don't uh, get any sores or have any apparent discomfort from the way the load is distributed the reason for these shafts will become clear, or these loops, I mean, will become clear later, but it's they are a component of the traditional design of work harness uh, that carries the load, the shafts of the load, and helps to provide the mechanism that is the braking mechanism. I'll get into that in more more completely in further videos.